Those puffy clouds are why so many producers wanted to come here to film. Um, and another reason why they like to film is obviously the landscape. But one of the things I want you to notice is what color are the rocks here? White and red. Right. But now look that way. They look that way. Right. Do you see any white down there? Mm -hmm. Hey, but as we move up here, when we get up to where the Buffalo Bill set is, all the rocks are white. Okay, so literally from Kanab, you can go from desert landscape, and uh, the greatest story ever told was filmed in here in Kanab, as well as well as uh, Arabian Nights on the sand dunes. But yet we've also had movies like High Sierra with Pearl Eyes. You know, so you can go from total desert landscape to mountains with streams and snow and whatever, all within about an hour of canoe. So it just made for, you know, you could turn your camera that direction. You got these whites, right? And we turn it over here and it's totally different. So, okay. so if you look, if you look this way, and you follow the white cliffs down to the end of that little pinnacle, you can see right there in the ring, there's that little arch. You guys see the Why arch? Why are we following you? Say it one more time. So if you follow this big white face, yeah. and come right to the end of that, that face, yes. there's those little hoodoos sticking up. Yes. Yeah. The last hoodoo. Yeah, that small little arch. That small little arch. Yeah. That's called Eagle Arch. Now, 1934, Dude Ranger, which was a book written by Jane Grey, was filmed here in Johnson Canyon. And there was a, a fence gate put across the arch, and they actually filmed from the back side. And there's seen uh, several scenes in there where you see the bad guys with their wrestled cattle coming through the arch to go to their hideout. Wow. <laughs> wow. You see the arch? Yeah. So you can actually go on to YouTube and put in the Dude Ranger, and you can watch the entire yeah. show on YouTube. Good question. Huh? Good question. What? Um, do you have to? Do people have to? You know, do they have to pay to use this land to film on? Back then, they, people they would pay very little for that. People but wouldn't come out this far to see somebody like, doing something. Say the guy that owned this property, he probably had every one of his horses rented out. Oh, okay. So, like, yeah, you can use yeah. whatever property okay, you want to. That way, yes. You, you know, I'm making money for you being here. Exactly. Um, like three times. Bruce, who owns this now? I think uh, Van Magistrine owns it now. Van? Um, or A.V.? Huh? A.V.? No, Van, the attorney. The attorney Van? Okay. Yeah. You so have to be careful when you say last mind. names around here because there's so many families that have... Yeah. I know how you feel about him, Bruce. <laughs> when these movies come in here, then the people was really good to work with them because it was an industry, it was good, and Walt Disney and all of them was really good to the movie people. They pay them for them. One of the reasons that they quit doing some of the movies here because it got a little bit high. They figured, well, we can go to they got greedy. To, uh, Hollywood and uh, put up the scenery just as good. Yeah. And that might be one of the things that and then, of course, Western movies has gone away with their own film. Western movies like they used to. Like they used to. They're not doing anything like they used to. Yeah, true that. This is completely a different world. Yeah. Out there than oh, when God. I yeah. grew yes. Up yes. In this area. So, is this actually Johnson Canyon? Yes, we are in Johnson Canyon. So, where does this road go? So if you continue, there, it, there's a fork in the road. If you take the right-hand fork, you go out on the Scudampaw Road, which takes you to Bruce's house, or well, to his ranch. Uh, and then his son actually has another ranch just up the road here that we'll stop by. Um, so the one road will take you either to Glendale, across the Glendale Bench, or all the way to Alton, Utah. 
um, the the uh, Scutumpah Road will take you all the way to Cannonville and um, into Bryce Canyon. Wow. Um, oh, now, <laughs> neither one of those roads do you want to be on if no. it rains a drop of rain. Yeah. It looks like it might. Yeah. <laughs> want to turn real slick? Oh, real slick, yeah. Yeah, you can't. Even four-wheel drive, you got to Yeah. Drive. Yeah, you, you got to have... But there's a great tracks on there. there. Well, in fact, right now, from my understanding, is that the the road going over across the the buckskin out there, mm -hmm. out the bull rush, yeah. um, that had washed everything out. The the road um, going across that big ravine. There's a big slot canyon, and all they did is they just pushed enough dirt and brush and logs into that that it created a pass to go over, and because we got so much moisture this year, it flooded that out and tore it out. Oh, wow. So now they're having to redo yeah. that. Is that the so. place where there's a vehicle? Yes. And so how far down Scutumpa? Scutumpa. Scutumpa? Yeah, he takes it? his brakes. Yeah. Oh, it's a ways. Yeah. It's past Lake Wash. Oh, yeah. 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 So. yeah, our neighbor was just out yeah, there it's getting past filled, past so I know it's open. Now. It's probably yeah. another, I'd say 30 minutes past Lake Wash. Okay. It depends on how, how you drive. Like, I off-road race, so, you know, 130 miles an hour across the desert is no big deal. But you probably don't go that fast. Yeah, you probably have to go that fast to keep it going. Okay, so, any questions? No? No questions about the Dude Ranger or about any of the other, other things around here? Um, I will tell you that John Ford loved it here. He loved doing films there. He did many, many films. Not all of them with, with, were with John Wayne, although most people associate, oh, John Ford and John Wayne, because they did a lot of movies together. But uh, John Wayne did um, about eight movies in this area. Um, and pretty much every movie that he did here was with John Ford. Uh, but then he left John Ford and started Bantam, Bantam Productions. Um, went out so that on his was own. his own label? That was John Wayne's own label, okay. yes. How many did he do out in Monument Valley? Um, a few. Less um, than here. Less than here, yeah. yeah. It's funny because uh, everyone associates Monument Valley with Arizona and, and all this stuff. But what they don't realize is the actual Monument Valley is in Utah. Um, yeah. So <laughs> It's on Mountain Time, not Arizona Standard Time? Well, actually, it's on Arizona Standard Time. Monument Valley is. Even though it goes into Utah. Doesn't matter. Everything on the reservation, they see the Indians were smart. They said you can't cut a foot off of a blanket and tie it to the end, call it a longer blanket. Yeah, we're going to go. But for some reason, us white people, we, we, I don't know, we're stupid and we go, if I cut an hour off of here and add it to here, it makes a longer day? No. Yeah. So Native Americans are like, we're not doing that. Yeah. So when everybody else changes, the reservation stays the same. In all of Arizona. Yeah, and, and yeah, all of Arizona. But the reason why Arizona stayed that way is because the majority of the state of Arizona is on reserva is reservation land. Oh, so, so that's it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I was looking at some statistics one time on the uh, the size of the Navajo Nation. It's huge. Comparing it to like eastern East Coast states. Yeah, it's way bigger. Oh, it blows yeah. your mind yeah. how many states can go into the boundaries. Of yeah. Yeah, um, most people don't realize that the Navajo Nation actually um, takes part of Utah, all four corners. Yeah, I mean, well, and other tribes so are in there, too. There are, but um, Arizona hosts the largest reservation in the world and the smallest. Right. Mm. So the largest being the Navajo Nation, which is huge, and then the smallest being the Pima Reservation, which takes up two blocks in downtown Phoenix. Oh, wow. So. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Huh. So, what's your favorite? Do you like Monument? I don't know. Do I like Monument? Yeah. Or what? Or what? What, what is your favorite area around here? I like it all, yeah. um, because I'm an off-roader, mm -hmm. and I like jeeping, and I like oh. rock crawling, and I compete in rock crawling nationally, cool. and slick rock is just a blast, a lot of fun. <laughs> um, I like it all. Um, the only thing I don't like is mud. So, um, how's the blue, that blue blue ribbon? Is it is it getting its way? Is it keeping the road? The oh, Blue Ribbon going? Coalition. Is it um, working? Yeah, they do a lot. Um, actually, I'm a member of Blue Ribbon Coalition. I'm very good, good friends with Del Albright good and Stacy. Um, 
and they do a lot to keep public lands open. Um, the biggest issue that, that we have here in this area, and this goes back to the filming stuff too, is uh, when they made, when Bill Clinton signed the monument, first of all, he didn't even come into the state of Utah to yeah, sign Yeah, he was it. at South Rim. Yeah, yeah, he stayed <laughs> at the South Rim. Um, secondly, it closed down everything, and like Blue Ribbon Coalition is all for public using the public lands, you know, right. responsibly, but but having access. Yeah. And when the monument came in, they shut down access to a lot of area. I mean, right. you're talking million, you know, 11 million acres at one point. I was I was the, the BLM firefighter that covered that area. I was the head firefighter for about 15 years. Um, and you have 11 million acres. Well, say you're in a wheelchair. How are you supposed to access your public lands when they say, you can't drive out there, you have to walk? Well, that's not fair, right. you know. Um, but well, then they start saying, "Oh, you can't take horses into this area, and you can't take this into this area." And it's like, that's all natural. Time Why? Out. You know? <laughs> it's like what? So yeah, we we summer up in Idaho by West Yellowstone, and when they limited that snowmobile access into the park in the winter, yeah, it shut down so many private family businesses in West Yellowstone. Yeah. It so, here a couple years ago, I was the stunt driver for a movie called Monolith. It was an Italian crew came in and filmed. Um, they then re-released it in the United States and it was called Trap Child. And they, a, a majority of the filming was done out at, by the pre of movie set. Um, baseline of the story was this lady is in a futuristic smart car that is impenetrable and it's supposed to be perfect and, all, and she hits a deer out in the middle of the desert. I got to be the guy that threw this fake deer out in front of the car. <laughs> um, so she hits this deer, and she gets out to see what happened, and it lock, tra locks her child in the car, and it malfunctions, and she can't get into her her, her little teeny boy. Um, and the hoops that they had to go through to film, they never even left the road. They're on a road that gets traveled by hundreds of thousands of visitors every year, just a dirt road. And the hoops they had to jump through in order to film on that because it was on Monument was just ridiculous. Um, and to me, you know, there's a lot of people that don't, that will never have the opportunity to come and see what we have here. So to me, I, I produce a show um, about off-roading and I love the idea of keeping public lands open and showing people stuff that that might be the only way they see it. So with, uh, with, with Trump cutting that path, it's still, it's just now more accessible, right. but it's still managed by the Bureau exactly. of Land Management. Exactly. Right. Well, so and that's it was the thing. not a bad thing. I was here fighting fire for the BLM, and we constantly got into arguments. We're like, why is there a monument? It was already BLM land. It was right. already being managed. Right. It now made it less accessible once they did that. And... And here's the other thing, when it comes to the history of this area, you have people like Bruce who are cattle ranchers who have been running cattle on this land for you know, 100 plus years. Do you think they're gonna do anything to the land to destroy their herd? No. Well, they're gonna take better care of it than the BLM because they have a reason to. Yeah. Okay? Bread and butter. But then here comes this mind that's saying, oh, you can't have cows on here because you know it's destroying the land. That's the most ridiculous bunch of bull crap I've ever heard of. And then they let the wild mustangs eat it all. Well, we don't have that problem here. We will, but, uh, <laughs> out, in, out in the desert, they do. Yeah. Um, things have changed a lot since they, one, they reduced the monument. Two, they have a manager of the monument right now that, that really wants to see usage of the land. Um, he's a lot easier to work with than some of the other people have been. Um, we've had several film projects here. I try to stick with this with film because obviously that's yeah. why we're here. Right. Um, we've had a lot of film projects here on on public lands um, recently, um, and he and the BLM has been great to work with with that because of the management that's here now. So we have Can Am comes here every year and does their commercials and Polaris. Mm -hmm. um, Monday I am going out with GoPro, Polaris, and Can Am to do a commercial. Cool. Um, so I mean, there's. There's usage of the land, more usage of the land now, because management is going, you know what? Yeah, it's public land, the public needs to use it. Right. So. Um, <laughs> On the way up here, there's a really nice article in National Geographic about that exact topic, about how much land 
know, was turned back over there and yeah. the, how they're going back and forth about how they use it. It was really interesting. When you don't live out here, you don't know all that, you know? Well, and <clears throat> I don't know if anyone's an environmentalist. I'm not. I'm, I'm definitely a conservationist. I believe in conserving for our future. I want my kids to see. You're not a wacko, right. in other words. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, but when I worked for the BLM, there were several times, and one in particular, where this couple came in and they just started screaming at us about how we had destroyed the land and what the bleep bleep, bleep are we doing, and, and we have pictures to prove it. The Sierra Club sent us pictures, and we're like, "Do we see those pictures?" And they, um, and they're like, "Here we go." And we're like, "Okay, well." They're like, "This is what it looked like before. Now this is what it looks like." And we're like, "Okay, um, I can take you to that green meadow that's up on Cedar Mountain, or I can take you out on the Arizona Strip where this is in the desert. <laughs> but I can't take you to the same at the same time. Physics doesn't work that way." And they're like, "What?" We're like. You were lied to for money. Uh -huh. They got you to send them money by lying to you. Do you get that? They're like, that's not true. Like, follow me. <laughs> by the time we got done, boy, they were hot at the Sierra <laughs> Club. Because, I mean, it looked just like the pictures. Yeah. You know, I'm like, there you go. Here's the meadow. You know, oh, here you go. Here's the Arizona Strip. You know, I can show you the exact locations that they got pictures of. But, um... Nothing like local knowledge, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and again, it goes back to, like I was saying, the cattle ranchers have been, you know, raising cattle here forever, but yet somebody that went and got a degree knows knows better how to manage the land that they've been working off of for 100 years? I don't think so. Where were the boundaries here? The so we are, right now, we are not what on was monument. Okay, when does it start? Um, yeah, that's your monument to cross there on that the yeah. private ground. It, it, you go on the other side to private ground, that's where the monument began. It goes clear down to the tree, clear down to unit 89. Okay. It comes up through here. And just you just go on the other side there a little ways, and when any time you're in BLM on that side, it's a monument. And the way we as cattlemen look at the range and taking care of it, I mean, we don't want to destroy it. We want to improve it, improve the grasses, improve things because that's our livelihood mm -hmm. and so we try to improve it we try to uh, improve the water and you can go up on here and see I many places where there's water we've got a pipeline that comes down on these white ledges which you'll go up through mm -hmm. that goes clear up underneath those, underneath those pink ledges that we maintain we have water for the cattle we have water for the wildlife and there's water for people that hike and you know that's the thing we do we improve the ground we don't want to Thank destroy you. it mm -hmm. We want, because it's, it's my livelihood. Yeah. In other words, I graze my cattle, and when the grass is gone, when it's down so low, you should leave at least 50 to 75% of your grass there. We move them to another pasture so that it stays, so that it looks good. Yeah. Things, and that's the way we operate our ranch. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we welcome the public on, too, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any lock gates on my private property. If people call me and want to go on, like, on any part of it, I let them go the road they can go through. All I expect is they close the gate and, and stay on the roads as is, you know. How big a ranch? We have up here, we have around 1,600 acres of private ground. Awesome. But, uh, of course, it takes, you know, it takes a lot of acres in this area to raise one cow. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. And then we run, and when we get up here, I'll show you where we run our cattle in the summertime. Right now, our cattle's out on that mountain. Turned up the ranch, you've seen mm -hmm. that big black mountain yeah. out on there. That's where they're at, which is called the Kaibab. Mm -hmm. We're in the process of gathering them right now. And it, around the uh, 20th of May, we drive our cattle up this road, okay. up to the so ranch you leave up them here. Out on the pasture for a certain amount of time. Right, and six months. They're out there six months or up here six months. Oh, okay. So when do I they wondered come about up? that because Soon, you drive May. up like, oh. yep. from Ohio. Johnson doesn't run year round, does it? It dries up, doesn't it, in the summer? That's what I thought. Yeah. You don't see any, anything around them. Right. You know, you just see the cattle. Yeah, that's forest permit out there. We're out on the Kaibab National Forest yeah. in the wintertime. And then we move up here in the summertime and we keep them on the private ground up here for about a month. And then we turn out on the BLM the 15th of June. And they're out on there until the, around the 15th of October. And then we bring them back into the ranch and you lease uh, from the uh, Bureau of Land Management yeah, yeah. when they're at the Kaibab? From the Forest Service. Uh -huh. 
Mm -hmm. and then pretty, pretty inexpensive, right? Like a well, yeah, it's it's not bad, but you know, it figures it. Uh, it's good. From a firefighter standpoint, because I, I actually taught at the National Wildland Fire Academy for federal firefighters. If you have people grazing, your fire, your your Better. ability to have fire goes way down. Yeah, right, because right. there's not as much tinder. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 So when you hear people saying, "Oh, grazing's bad for the..."